Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Vitals Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well. Today is 1st of October, a new start of the month, uh, 1st October 2022. Just make sure that you are having a proper uh, plan of action uh, for this particular month. It's a new month. Uh, we are heading towards the end also of 2022 with three more months remaining. Uh, just make sure that all of you productively uh, make yourselves driven towards a goal that you want to achieve very, very soon. With Without further ado, let's just very quickly get started with today's session. Today, we have a quick crash course part one on short stories. And today, our primary focus is going to be to introduce short stories and also look at modern short stories. Um, post that, of course, we will be looking at, uh, in the next class, we'll be looking at uh, 19th century short stories and how short stories is a very recent genre altogether. What are the various theorists uh, have to say on theories related to short stories? Because you do get questions uh, on these topics as well in your exams. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, without further ado, let's just very, very quickly get started. Uh, good morning, Manisha, Rupesh, Nikomoni, Bubbly, uh, Gaurav. Yes, Rupesh is wishing everybody a very happy Durga Puja and Navratri. Um, Gaurav, Namika, Sara, Vartika, Nilofar. Nilofar has been uh, very regular these days. Very nice, Nilofar. Um, Rizwana. Dipsa, Ria, Inna, Afsara, Monster King. Uh... Right, uh, Liji, Prabhu, Monster King, rather than saying if I cleared my JRF, you can say that, you know, I will clear my JRF by, say, studying for these many number of hours. Just keep your affirmations as positive as possible because that will really help you. I want all of you to take out your notepads as well. Uh, just keep your notepads handy uh, because we will be doing a lot of written work um, uh, today. So just make sure that you, you keep your written work. What is the agenda for today's session? Today, we'll have quick icebreaker questions continuing from our mock net that we had done on Wednesday on the application platform. Uh, so remember on Wednesday on the application platform, I had shared the link on the Telegram platform. We had covered a mock net of around close to approximately 20 questions. Um, let's just do a quick mock net, uh, a quick uh, like, you know, packing icebreaker 10 questions. After that, we will start looking at modern short stories. Uh, we will cover three important writers of modern modern short stories today and tomorrow we will cover other two along with 19th century short stories and theories about short stories. So these are two lectures that you have to watch them together. Also in the last class we had not completed the black power concept. So towards the end of the session we'll also cover the black power concept. So three things, icebreaker questions, introducing short stories and introducing modern short stories via today's lecture and then second the third part is black power movement and then we'll culminate the session all right so without further ado let's just quickly get started because there is a classroom class also at 11 uh, a.m on german literature so we also have to complete that particular session okay uh, so today uh, we, our topic for discussion would be short stories like i've told you the agenda is icebreaker questions uh, after icebreaker questions, which are continuation of the pre-app session, uh, the mock that we had given. After that, we will intervene and we'll look at the uh, the short story, particularly modern short story. After that, we'll quickly complete the black power movement, and post that we will end the session. Post that we will end the session with your homework. Okay, so let's quickly get started with your icebreaker questions. We've done approximately 20 to 25 questions previously. So starting from there, John Garver's Confessio Amantis is written in which language? So there are three parts that even Gower's career can be divided into. So where is Confessio Amantis? Which part is Confessio Amantis coming? And it was written in which language altogether? Which language are we able to see Confessio Amantis is written? Okay, so let's very quickly get started. Let's see how many of you are able to answer it correctly. Uh, Tahmina has given the right answer. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Correct, correct, correct. There's a portal. There's a portal. You can just figure that out. Uh, all right. Absolutely right. Gaurav, everybody has given the right answer. Everybody has given the right answer. All right. So, John Carver was writing in French. He was writing in Latin. He was writing in English. Right. He was writing in French, Latin and English. Speculum Menditantus. I'll, I'll just show you the explanation as well. Speculum Menditantus is coming uh, in the French period. Vox Clementis. V-L. Vox Clementis is written in Latin. 
and Confessio Mantis is coming in the English period, right? Confessio Mantis is coming in the English period. So it's Speculum Menditantis, French, SF, Vox Clementis, which is Latin, and finally Confessio Mantis. So Confessio Mantis is coming in English altogether. He's a contemporary of Geoffrey Dr Chaucer. There have been questions coming on the contemporaries of Chaucer every now and then, Scottish Chaucerians, English Chaucerians as well. So John Gower, the Middle English poet that we are having, his Speculum Menditantis is written in the French period. Please remember that. Vox Clementis is coming in the Latin period, in the Latin period period and Confessio Amantis is coming in the English period. English period we are able to see Confessio Amantis is coming. Happiness was but the occasional episode in the general drama of pain. Hardy is also an important 19th century short story writer that we will be covering tomorrow uh, because today our primary focus is going to be on 20th century short story and we will cover three important writers in that regard. But Hardy is also an important short story writer that we are able to see. What we comes the correct answer here let's just see how many of you are able to get the right answer good morning good morning yes absolutely right absolutely right uh, mayor of casterbridge is absolutely the correct answer michael henshaw's character who sells his daughter for five guineas and this is what is setting the entire plot in motion right and uh, it's of course like a tragedy of sorts that we're able to see otherwise also all the other major works are extremely important for thomas hardy you will have to cover thomas hardy particularly if you're preparing for pgt entrances thomas hardy is like a writer also that you have to prepare Prepare, right uh, so always keep that in mind so these are lines that are coming in mayor of casterbridge the novel which is telling us about michael henshaw who gets drunken at a fair he sells his daughter and wife for five guineas right and this is setting the entire play in uh, action entire novel in action who wrote the sense of an ending english studies in the theory of fiction sense of an ending very important work very important work by this writer that you're able to see even if you're looking at Rotledge literary criticism and theory by Gulmeri uh, you will be able to look at these pointers in greater detail at that particular uh, you know in, in the in those references what is the right answer here everybody Uh, Tamina, there is already lessons on uh, Thomas Hardy. I think there are two videos. Uh, so if you just go and search Thomas Hardy by Joseph Zamprep, you'll be able to find uh, Thomas Hardy exhaustively covered. All right. Care mode is the right answer. Absolutely right. Frank Care mode is absolutely the correct answer. So the sense of an ending, this is written by Care mode. Who's Care mode? He's a British critic. And what is he telling you about? He's telling you about how, um, you know, readers approach the entire uh, genre of fiction um so basically you know we are we are making sense we are making meaning of our lives through literature via literature via the works that we're able to see right and he looks at many writers he looks at samuel Beckett, he looks at james joyce he looks at shakespeare also and he he, he says that you know literature has always played a very intrinsic part in our life literature has always and always played an extremely important part in our lives altogether that is what he highlights Okay, so please be very careful about that. These kind of questions, of course, come in. Here, uh, literary criticism and theory by Rotledge really helps you for these kind of questions uh, altogether. He's a British critic. Origins have also been asked. So do remember that. So the sense of an ending studies in the theory of fiction, 1967. You can get a question on set them in chronological order. So have a brief understanding of the uh, time period also. It's by the British critic. What is it telling you about? It's telling you about how... We are making sense of the world via literature. He's looking at works like Shakespeare, Joyce, Beckett, and then he's trying to help us understand how literature is playing a critical role. A damsel in Dulcimer um, in Vision Once I Saw is a line from. Where are these lines taken in from? Where are we able to see that these lines are coming in from? Where is it that we are able to see that this line is coming from? Excellent. Uh, Tamina has already given the answer. Pooja, good morning. An Anamika has also given the right answer. Dulal, uh, Ravi Pandey, Rupesh, Nikomoni. Everybody has given the right answer. Das, Gaurav, uh, Saima. 
uh, Tehmina, Prabhu, Pooja, everybody is giving the right answer. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, so here, when we are talking about a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision, once I saw, right, uh, this, these are lines that are taken from S.K. Coldridge, Kubla Khan, right? Kubla Khan. And Kubla Khan is also like having an extremely interesting story altogether, how it was a fragment. Uh, even Pandemonium, the movie which talks about uh, Coleridge and Wordsworth's uh, uh, entire fight, the literary fight, uh, so to say, also talks about the composition of Kubla Khan. Uh, altogether so extremely important these are lines coming from Kubla Khan there are uh, works even if on a daily basis you're probably reading one not for this attempt but for next attempt it'll be very helpful for you overall so Kubla Khan is where these lines have come in from it was a vision of fragment Kubla Khan the Mongolian emperor how he builds this lavish palace in the state of Zanado altogether so extremely important work which of the following theories was inspired by the work of Jacques Derrida which was inspired by the work of Jacques Derrida which story was inspired by the work of Jacques Derrida very very quickly let's see how many of you are able to answer this question correctly again build your theory uh, that is what we, are, we started the free app session course of 20 lectures uh, where we are going to be intensively looking at making sure that you know you get the opportunity of strengthening your theory criticism uh, as well as cultural studies bit because that that will really help you overall what is it see absolutely right who started answering dipsa Aktara, saima rupesh ravi manisha gaurav nilofa rizwana dulal varsika Rashmi, uh, Rashmita, Prabhu, Babli, Ina, very good, Pooja. Everybody has given the right answer. Excellent, excellent. So deconstruction is absolutely the right answer. And he's a French philosopher, by the way. He's a French philosopher, by the way, right? So uh, here, Jacques Derrida, this was a really simple question. It shouldn't have taken you more time at all. Deconstruction is really important. And this is started spearheaded by a philosopher who was supposed to be telling about the loopholes in structuralism and went on to inaugurate deconstruction altogether, right? Which of these novels is dealing with the tragedy of the Compson family? Extremely simple question again from Amlet, American literature. Uh, very, very simple, but let's just see how many of you are able to answer this question correctly. The Compson family. Faulkner's work, the tragedy that we're able to see which is telling us about stream of consciousness. Uh, there is also like these multiple narrative voices which we are able to look at. What is the correct answer here, everybody? Right, absolutely right. William Faulkner, Dipsa has answered it correctly. Dipsa, Das, Aziz, Rupesh, everybody is right. No, Aziz is not right. Uh, yes, it is the sound and the fury that we're talking about, right? It is the sound and the fury that we're talking about that where the Compson family is shown. All the writings of William Faulkner are important. William Faulkner and John Dos Passos are the writers who are experimenting in American literature in the 20th century. Otherwise, majority of writers who are writing novels uh, in America are using the realistic tradition but these people are abandoning the realistic tradition these people are not using uh, people like John Das <coughs> sorry John Das Passo was William Faulkner they're not using the realistic method at all which of the following is the earliest play by Harold Pinto the earliest play by Harold Pinter. Yesterday, I put the Instagram post as well, the IG post as well on the play within a play by Tom Stupart. Tom Stupart is also just like Harold Pinter, favorite of net exam. Uh, do take a tour of that. The play within a play where you're able to see Bird Bot coming in. Uh, so so you, you should know these characters. You should know the plays altogether. It's going to be really helpful. What's the correct answer here, everybody? What becomes the correct answer? Let's see how many of you are able to answer it correctly. Rupesh has answered it correctly. Rupesh was the first one. Nikomoni has answered it correctly. Aziz has answered it correctly. It is the room. Saima has answered it correctly. Manisha, Dalal, uh, everybody is right. No, Ravi, it's not the birthday party. Bubbly, you're right. Bubbly is right. Shrija Bhardwaj is right. Das Priyanka is right. Everybody is right. Ranjni, Tamina. Most of you got it. Madhusmita Chitiga is also got it right. Taimina Khan. Very good. The Room is absolutely the right answer. Manisha Sagar also. The Room is actually one of the earliest plays of Harold Pinter. It is trying to tell us about this aged uh, woman who is living in this small apartment, right? And that is the reason she is terrified all the time. She is having this like sort of a, a phobia that something is happening. And of course, Pinter is also a perfect example of absurd drama. Uh, and, and today also, we will be talking about short stories, the theme of absurdity, sparseness, fragmentation, alienation. Those are very important and critical when we are looking at the 
modern period so this is the room that we are talking about this is the earliest play one of the earliest play telling us the story of this old woman who's living in a small apartment this terrifies her sense of absurdity that is constantly there okay this these are the statements these are the two statements and then there is a question that is uh, you have to select the correct one the new critics suppose the biographical historic uh, historical sociological and comparative approach to conventional criticism the term was first used by t s eliot okay let's just see how many of you are able to answer this question correctly let's just quickly quickly uh, take a tour of the answers <coughs> absolutely right absolutely right i see a lot of you writing a so basically new critics are people who are looking at textual analysis itself they are completely isolating divorcing themselves from the biographical historical sociological characters altogether uh, it was actually spingarn it was spingarn who had used american literary critic spingarn who had used uh, the term for the very first time the term for the very very first time that is what you are able to see uh, so statement a is correct but statement 2 is not correct it's not ts eliot but it's actually spingarn who's using the term first is absolutely right but the second statement is not right right so new critics are telling you that you know the body of literature has to be studied uh, here the professors were giving excerpts to the students to analyze to look at i a richards was actually doing that and it was first used by the american literary critic spingarn spingarn was the first one to use it uh lawrence we'll talk about his short stories as well women in love is a sequel to women in love is a sequel to very simple question and this is a question that i think now you should be uh, you know you should have learned this question by now hopefully <clears throat> manjot yes new criticism the concept is getting de developed but the american critic is using the term for the very first time yes 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 tipsa ransom's book is also there good morning good morning good morning prashan yes c is absolutely the right answer women in love is a sequel to the family saga the rainbow uh, rainbow is telling us about brangwin family across three generations all together uh, so please keep that in mind uh, and here absolutely right the majority of you have got the right answer um, most of you i think have got the right answer so women in love is a sequel to the rainbow women in love is a sequel to the rainbow is a sequel to the rainbow again dh lawrence will just cover his short stories as well here we are able to see that women in love is the sequel to the rainbow rainbow is telling us about the brangwin family across three generations all together tom brangwin is the farmer who marries a polish widow and uh, then of course uh, anna you know the attention shifts to anna the daughter who gets married to tom's nephew will and then finally it is telling you about anna and will's daughter ursula and gundrun ursula and gundrun the brangwin sisters who are there so all these characters you can make a character tree uh, to always remember because then you know these these characters become a little complicated uh, altogether so you can just make a tree all together and then you know uh, you can take it forward from there this is the second generation so this is the second generation this is the first one and then the gundrun and ursula this is the third part so three generations of the brangwin family are being talked about in women in love and rainbow so rainbow and women in love right so it's it's actually rw you can remember it like that rainbow and women in love which of these writers was a diary writer was a diarist so virginia woolf will just talk about it in while writing short stories is actually trying to complicate she's trying to say that short stories are not just simply there there are also uh, letters episodes diaries there are also instances of short stories so we'll talk about that point as well what is the correct answer here Nikumoni has got it right. Dipsa has got it right. Uh, Tamina has got it right. Manisha, Chandni, everybody has got it. Right. No, Chandni is not in. Aziz, Saima, Das, uh, Avtara, Dulal, Rashmi, everybody, Babli, everybody has got the right answer. Excellent, excellent. Samuel Pepys is the right answer. These are really simple questions. You should not be going wrong with these, right? Uh, diaries written from first January. 
this is actually 1660. You can rectify this. First January 1660, 1660. For the next 10 years, he is writing it. So, um, what what happened was that uh, I'll I'll be making this IG post also. I think today tomorrow about ailments that uh, uh, that these writers have been suffering from. So, uh, Milton was suffering from blindness, and he was told by the doctor, the physician, that you know if you if you uh, keep on reading, it will completely, uh, you know, you you'll go blind very very soon. He did not adhere. Samuel Papies when he was told that you know you better abandon writing otherwise you'll go blind he immediately stopped so that's the passion that we're talking about right that's the passion so Milton was totally passionate about his writing career altogether but a very important document telling us about the plague of London the great fire of London which of the following is not a poem from Eliot's four quartets? It's not a part of Eliot's four quartets. The four quartets that Eliot is writing, it's not a part of it. What is the correct answer here, everybody? <clears throat> Yes, Aziz has got it right. Das Priyanka has got it right. Uh, four quartets is having East Coker, Burnt Norton, Dry Salvages, Little Giddy, right? And D is absolutely the correct answer. Hysteria is not a part of it, right? Hysteria is not a part of it. That is something that you will have to uh, keep in mind. Burnt Norton is a part of it. East Coker is a part of it. Uh, dry Salvages is a part of it. Little Gidding is also a part of it, right? Little Gidding is also a part of it. Little Gidding is also part of it but hysteria is not a part hysteria is not a part at all so the four quartets collection of four poems burn norton east coker dry salvages little gidding right and these are interconnected references which are telling you about man's relationship to the society to the world that man is a part of that is something that these kind of writings are primarily trying to help us understand okay uh quickly coming on to the next the vicar of wakefield is a novel by the vicar of wakefield is such a simple question good morning good morning sananda good morning everybody okay what is the correct answer the vicar of wakefield is a novel by <coughs> Very good, Manjot. Very nice. Very nice. I think Manjot is killing it today with her uh, interventions and co uh, like you know comments. Huge shout out to Manjot. Good. Okay, yes, absolutely right. Oliver Goldsmith is the correct answer. Oliver Goldsmith is absolutely the right answer. So Goldsmith is the one he had actually written it to, uh, you know, escape bankruptcy altogether, telling us about Dr. Charles Primrose and his family who live in this setting called Vicar and they lose all the money altogether. But a very important work in order to look at, you know, the development of prose writings altogether. The preface to the wretched of the earth is written by and we had just done this question in yesterday's classroom class as well. In yesterday's classroom class while we were looking at your French writers if you remember while covering French writers we had spoken about this particular person writing being in nothingness writing who's rejecting his Nobel Prize. So if all of you are paying attention in class I think you'd be able to answer this question very very simply. Yes, B is the right answer. Nikumoni, Tamina, Akara, Aziz, Saima, Tamina, Manisha, Das, Dulal, uh, Rashmita, Dipsa. Everybody's got the right answer. Excellent. Jopal Satra is absolutely the right answer. He's the one who's writing a preface to uh, to uh, uh, Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth. So Jopal Satra is writing that, right? The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Here yeah, we are able to see that J. Paul Sartre is writing the preface to this particular work. The plowman homeward plods his weary way is an example of, it, it, what is it an example of? Where are these lines also taken from? You are able to see that, you know, um, an elegy written in a country church are very popular lines that are coming in. So what is this an example of? What is this an example of? <coughs> so sorry. Very nice, very nice. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer here. Brilliant. It's an example of a transferred epithet. Transferred epithet. Epithet is a phrase that we are using. And when you are trying to change uh, so weary way, 
you're calling you you you're using an epithet which is human and you're trying to impose that to uh, you know uh, an object which is there so this is an example of a transferred epithet that is coming very way <coughs> so sorry so it's a transferred epithet altogether rhetoric and prosody do cover it rhetoric and prosody will be very very scoring for you we'll try and see if we can help you out with one more class but otherwise we've actually done one session on youtube also the play by which writer influenced the concept of angry young man very simple question but still it comes in your exams also it's still asked in your exams as well Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amis, this particular writer's work, they're telling you about the struggles of the middle class. Today, we'll also talk about the slice of life technique being followed in short stories also. So what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here, everybody? Yes, Saima Candy has answered it correctly. Saima was the first one to answer it. Very nice, Saima Candy. Right, John Osborne is the right answer here. So Osborne's look back in anger became a cult work telling us about the angry young man generation. And we are able to see Kingsley Amis' Lucky Jim, Osborne's look back in anger. They're telling you about the struggles of everyday middle class life altogether. That is what they're doing, right? That is what they're literally telling us. This is the last question, last icebreaker question. Last icebreaker question. After this, let's quickly get into short stories discussion. What is the correct answer here, everybody? What is the correct answer here? <coughs> Sorry. What becomes the correct answer here? Yes, absolutely right. Yes, it is. Uh, look back in anger, Jimmy Potter. Very good. Very good. Yes, Shrija. We've started getting there. Meena has given the right answer. Gaurav has given the right answer. Every Rizwan has given the right answer. Syntax is absolutely right. Syntax is the study of, uh, you know, the, the words, their arrangements all together that you're actually looking at. Uh, so syntax is a study which is looking at the arrangement. How would you put the word? It's like a code that we're talking about. Now, I want all of you to take out your notepads. Now, we're going to be, into, uh, you know, starting, kickstarting. I want all of you to have your, uh, your notepads with you. Just keep your notepads handy. Uh, just keep them beside you uh, whatever you want to write you want to you want to probably write it down in a notepad you can write it in a notepad if you want to use a4 size sheets uh, for uh, for copying down these notes completely fine uh, absolutely fine um, uh, a4 size sheets are always preferred during this time because you know automatically you are actually uh, helping yourself uh, put together, stitch together uh, anything. For instance, if today you have studied a particular topic on say, uh, you, you have probably studied a topic on uh, on uh, 20th century British writers. So any question that you practice tomorrow, you can also attach it to that particular uh, notes that you've created already. So that's the reason it's very helpful. Okay, so let's quickly get started. First of all, short stories is a relatively newer genre. It is relatively a newer genre that we are talking about over here. Okay, now short stories is actually said to have emerged primarily by, uh, you know, these American writers like Edgar Allan Poe, Washington Irving. So American, con American region has been or America has been a country. The American literature writers have been forerunners of short story tradition. But short story is also having its roots in Gothic literature. It is also having its root in Gothic writings altogether. So it's important that, you know, Gothic literature played a very critical role. The first point you can write down in your notes is that Gothic literature played a very critical role in the development of short story. Tomorrow, when I'll tell you about the theories regarding short stories, one of the theories was that, you know, just like the bigger novels were standing for a sense of pride that man had the shorter novels were trying to make it crisper the shorter novels were trying to make things crisper conciser and also trying to defeat the inflated sense of pride that humans had right so a gothic writing is there the castle of otranto the castle of otranto uh, by horace walpole uh, this is this is like you know a, a work which made sure that people were looking up to uh, the gothic gothic format altogether uh, gothic literature therefore was really important and uh, people like Hawthorne, Edgar Allan Poe, Washington Irving, they are all practicing. They are all practicing this tradition of shorter stories. Now, shorter stories are available in multiple formats. Please remember that. Your short stories are available in multiple formats. You are able to see that short stories are coming in the format of tales. Short stories are coming in the format of sketches. So, sketches by Boss, by Charles Dickens. We'll just talk about this as well. 
or uh, they are coming in the form of tales stories various formats so the two most important pointers right now that all of you should have written in your notepads are that a the gothic tradition played a very critical role in the development of short stories and second there are multiple formats of short stories like tales sketches that we are able to see okay uh, irving uh, washington irving is writing the sketchbook right the sketchbook of, by geoffrey crayon or hawthorne is writing twice told tales these are all important collections that we are able to see these are all pertinent collections that are coming in um, and and you know here you are able to see here you are sort of able to see that how there is a development of this particular genre how we are able to look look at how we are able to notice that um, that predominantly small a smaller format of writings are becoming popular to crisply uh, package uh, the 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 story content and that is the reason critics also call it packaging literature right so uh, critics also call it packaging literature where things are packed together in a very neat manner all together gogol gogol or uh, even uh, turj turjdev is also a, a writer both these russian writers russian writers rather are helping us develop the short story format to the style that we know it today they have played a very critical role they have played a very crucial role in the development of this particular genre they have played an extremely important role all together uh charles dickens for that matter so tomorrow we will focus on 19th century short fiction but today your primary focus is going to be on 20th century short stories right today our primary focus is going to be on on the 20th short stories also remember in britain short stories is coming later in america we are able to see that you know many critics also say many critics say that that you know a uh, uh, short stories is america's national literary form it is america's national literary form people say that short stories is america's national literary form you know it is a sort of a national literary form literary form uh, that is what a lot of people say uh, critics have to say but uh, but we are able to see that it's just in europe particularly in england is coming later russia also uh, writers like gogol writers like turnjnev uh, the sportsman sketches for instance by turnjnev is an example or gogol's overcoat gogol's overcoat was a brilliant example of the short story genre very very important writing right uh, his overcoat but like i said 19th century short Uh, short stories we'll cover tomorrow so that is what these critics were saying critics were saying short stories was in america uh, america's literary format it was america's it was just like opera was to italy short story was to america they say that you know it was america's way of presenting their stories and where is this written particularly it is written in sudden fiction sudden fiction by shapard and thomas this is a book where they talk about how short stories was an american fiction and american style of writing and american way altogether britain was largely very late uh, when when we are looking at short stories altogether uh, please remember writers like charles dickens thomas hardy elizabeth gaskell uh, they are the ones who are who are actually coming and and making sure that you know uh, there is a shape a proper shape that is given but 19th century short stories is something that we will be uh, looking at tomorrow but please remember that there is a very important date that is 1842 1842 is extremely important why is it important? important because we are able to see um, that writers like edgar allan poe how how thorn these people are trying to make sure that you know short stories are are being showed to the world they're easier to absorb uh, people are able to complete it within one sitting also please remember that a lot of writers wanted to popularize the magazine tradition you wanted to try, for instance i'll give you this example right now what do people do they have daily newsletters for instance right a lot of business schools a lot of colleges are having business letters or newsletters right like newsletters of stoa school etc so what are you able to see that these daily newsletters are actually newsletters which are which are uh, trying to give us the best content so that we can start reading 
right? Uh, uh, for instance, there'll be content on the future of uh, uh, the edtech space. So there'll be content on moonlighting. Moonlighting is such an absurd concept because, you know, as academicians, moonlighting has always been there because, you know, you, people rather want to be professors because you can actually uh, do your work in the morning and then, you know, you can also have uh, other projects that you can engage in. So academia has always encouraged research or academia has always encouraged professors going ahead and doing other activities altogether. So this entire concept of moonlighting, moonlighting is this concept to do research about. It's really interesting. So because of the pandemic and work from home opportunities, how we are able to see that, you know, uh, people at Wipro, software engineers or other people, how they started actually working for two organizations. So that is basically moonlighting. Uh, read it. It's like a lot of uh, people are, are talking about this particular thing. But, but as uh, you know, as literature students, most of our writers are all always moonlighting. Rather today, uh, we, we have a classroom class at 11 a.m. on German literature. So German literature, most of these writers are actually doing their, uh, their jobs. And then uh, in their free time, are they writing? And are they becoming philosophers and writers altogether? So that's a very interesting concept overall. Uh, so 19th century, like I said, 19th century short story, Gidi Maupassant, Edgar Allan Poe, or uh, Gogol. This is something, or Anton Chekhov. This is something, Thomas Hardy, R.L. Stevenson, Rudyard Kipling. We'll, uh, we'll talk about in tomorrow's class. But today, I want you to have a very important uh, introduction. We'll also look at women short stories, by the way, because women are also using the short story format. But today, I want you to focus on modern short stories. So you can even put the heading modernism and short stories. You can even put the heading 20th century short stories or modernism and short stories. Now modernism is a reaction against certainties of Victorian age. What is modernism? Modernism is basically nothing but a sort of a reaction against the certainties of Victorian age. God is certain, everything is certain, certainties of the Victorian age, peaceful era. Modernism is trying to critique that. Modernism is trying to critique that altogether, right? That is what we are able to see. Short stories during the 20th century are undergoing a lot of changes. And we look at it uh, through these characters that we'll be looking at. The first very important writer is James Joyce and Dubliners. James Joyce's Dubliners is extremely important for us. Uh, why is it important? Because this is a short story collection that is coming according to H.E. Bates. According to H.E. Bates, the critic, and this question has, by the way, come in your exams as well. This question has been asked in your exams as well. According to H.E. Bates, H.E. Bates said that supreme but unwanted volume. That supreme, that supreme but unwanted volume. Supreme but unwanted, unwanted volume, unwanted unwanted volume so that is the criticism that was given on dubliners why is this important now when we talk about german literature uh, and writers like franz kafka's metamorphosis gregor samsa is suffering from paralysis because he gets transformed into uh, another creature altogether so there is a paralysis of sorts where your hands are not able to move as humans your legs are not able to move as humans you're incapable of action so modernism is not just known for the theme of alienation it is also known for the theme of paralysis we are able to see that it is telling us about this entire theme of paralysis paralysis is when things are just halted you cannot do anything that is a state of paralysis and modernism is actually offering us that sort of a state of paralysis altogether we are able to see that sort of a state of paralysis clearly clearly coming when we are looking at modernism that you have to be very mindful of right uh, so do remember that modernism per se is actually discussing is actually talking about uh, this entire issue of uh, paralysis so james joyce the same years the same years as virginia Woolf, 1882 all the way till 1941 right uh, so when you're looking at a uh, james joyce you need to remember that dubliners is a very important work the short story collection when is dubliners coming it's coming in 1914 it's coming in 1914. I want all of you to make notes of it. Uh, you can uh, put it in, uh, on A4 size sheet or you can write it down in a notebook format. Irrespective, just make sure that you're writing it down. That is important. You know, it is telling us about ordinary people living in Dublin. Because short story in 20th century will be about ordinary people. 
So it is telling us the stories of ordinary people who are there. These ordinary people, ordinary people living in Dublin altogether. And this is an example of a story cycle. This is an instance. This is an instance of what? This is an instance. This is an example of a story cycle. What is this an example of? It is an example of a story cycle. A story cycle is basically many stories that are coming at the same place or about a same person. They are revolving around one epicenter. Epicenter can be the same person, can be the same place, can be the same uh, theme. Like a lot of these stories that you have, like, you know, uh, like your, um, these women oriented stories where women are meeting on a, on a, uh, you know, on a railway stations uh, or uh, on a station or, you know, they're meeting at a, at a particular, in, in a particular bogey and then they're discussing their various stories are tied together, but the epicenter is one place. So it's a so, sort of a story cycle about ordinary people living in Dublin. These are all terms, story cycle, ordinary people living in Dublin altogether. Okay, uh, you need to remember that, you know, there are there, there is a question that comes in on Dubliners. What is the question that comes on Dubliners? Which were the stories that were individually published? Which were the stories that were individually published? So individually in the Dubliners, Individually, in the Dubliners, Dubliners was coming in 1914, but in 1904, in 1904 already, two works were published. What were they? The Sisters and Evelyn. Evelyn and the Sisters were already published. These kind of questions come in your exams. The Sisters and Evelyn were already published individually. They were published individually. What is the last story? The last story is the dead. What is the final story? The final story in the Dubliners is the dead. Please remember that. And again, the dead is trying to tell you about paralysis. Now, this entire Dubliners, the story cycle is telling us about childhood to adolescence altogether. Please remember, these are lines that James Joyce is talking about the series. You can write it down. Uh, please make a note of these lines that James Joyce himself is using to define his short story collection. This is important. Questions come directly from here. What is he trying to say? What is he trying to say? My intention was to write a chapter. My intention was to write a chapter of the moral history of my country and I chose Dublin and I chose Dublin for the scene because that city seemed to me the center of paralysis. I tried to present it to indifferent public under four of its aspects, childhood, adolescence, maturity and public life. What are the things which are important for us? A, it is trying to have Dublin as the epicenter. B, it is telling us about four aspects of human life, but telling us more, become, ma making us more aware about the state of paralysis. Paralysis is stillness. That is a modern uh, feature altogether. Uh, please remember Ireland, Irish history is of course coming in over here. One more thing that you have to keep in mind is that in the 19th century, in the 19th century, there was a trend, okay? In the 19th century, you were able to see that there was a trend of improving literature. What was it? So, in the 19th century, there was this entire trend of improving literature. What was improving literature? Literature for didactic purposes. There was a trend of improving literature. But here, that is not the case in the 20th century right and please remember that you wanted to give a moral lesson earlier but here you do not want to give a moral lesson at all anthony burgess very important question that comes in also anthony burgess in the 1970s right anthony burgess in the 1970s he had written few people were ready for it the taste was for didactism before Dubliners, the taste was for didactism. You wanted to be preached altogether. The pedestrian moral lessons of less naturalistic fiction. In Dubliners, the reader was not told what to think about the characters and their actions or rather inactions. The characters in modern stories are not having any actions. They are rather having inactions. Please remember that. They are rather having inactions. There was no great sins nor any performance of great good. We, we, there, there's like, um, I don't know if, if any one of you uh, watch, watch reels, uh, but there's this trending reel that is going on um, right now as we speak on 1st October 2022. So I don't know when you watch this uh, movie. So there's this Instagram reel, which go, which is and even YT Shorts for, for that matter, which has gone really viral uh, the past week. And that, that reel is, um, So, you know, they've made all sorts of things. Like uh, there was this reel where... Uh, 
this man was in dubai and he was being asked that how do you get a job in dubai and he's like mujhe nahi pata hai mujhse mat poochho na and then there's so many reels that they have made right um imagine next time if somebody is asking you you're like okay mujhe nahi pata hai mujhse mat poochho na so that is inaction that is a reality of modern existence and that is something that these short stories are trying to even project right that is something that these short stories are about to project so james joyce please remember these pointers i'm just repeating all the pointers just put them together just put them together if you will not make proper sheets and you know proper notes file them together but if you're using papers just file them together uh, very very quickly h e bates comment the supreme but unwanted volume that is important uh, dubliners 1914 it's a story cycle which is coming in sisters and evelyn they are coming uh, separately in individually in 1904 uh, it is telling you about childhood adolescence maturity the theme of paralysis is coming my intention was to write a uh, write a chapter of the moral history of my country and i chose dublin very important lines all together uh, right and um, uh, the scene uh, the city seemed to be the center of paralysis all together he says that anthony burgess says that you know in dubliners readers were not told what to think about the characters their actions or rather their inactions right there are, there were no great sins there was no performance of good deed that is the entry into modern literature objective in nature so all those are pointers for the first important short story writer that we are having james joyce the second important short story writer that we are having is virginia wolf right the second most important short story modern writer that we are having oh, okay also please uh, in james joyce uh, do remember this question has by the way come please write this down for james joyce before we go further for james joyce only write this down there is a story that he's written the clay okay there is a story there is clay there is maria you know maria is actually tricked into putting her hands inside the clay she is putting her hands inside the clay all together and you know maria is not even she is not even concerned about what has happened she is not at all worried about what has happened she really doesn't cares at all there is a song by the way this question comes there is a song i dreamt i dreamt i'm just writing this song in the clay so james joyce this is by james joyce only <coughs> the clay in which maria has to put you know i'm sure all of you must be having as students the clay modeling classes where we were supposed to be uh, putting using the clay and making things out of clay all together right uh, so maria is writing the song i dreamt i dwelt in marble halls i dreamt i dwelt i dreamt i dreamt i dwelt i dreamt i dwelt in marble halls in marble halls i dreamt i dwelt in marble halls so this is a song that you know uh, that we're able to see so basically modern short stories are telling you about mundane lives imagine clay almost every day in an indian kitchen uh, we are immersing our hands to make the dough if you're preparing chapatis for instance right so so uh, this is not something which is absolutely unique or something which is like you know conquering the world altogether so very very mundane that we are able to see but please remember james joyce was very important for a short story and encounter why why is this short story so important because this is telling us the theme of epiphany which is central to james joyce the theme of epiphany sudden realization it's a biblical theme that we are talking about it's a biblical story biblical story altogether that we are able to see so what are you able to see you are able to see that uh, this is telling you about a uh, you know narrator how he experiences a child abuser altogether and then you know he is having this moment of epiphany altogether so james joyce's short stories evelyn we we just spoke about that you know uh, the dead was the last part telling us about paralysis evelyn the sisters are are published independently clay is another important work and encounter is another important work so these are all important short stories by james joyce now moving on to virginia wolf virginia wolf is the second important short story writer virginia wolf again the same time coordinates 1882 to 1940 1882 to 1941 uh, here we are able to see till the time the feminists in uh, 1960s had revived virginia wolf she was considered to be a substandard modern writer by the way she was not considered to be but a very important member of the bloomsbury club now she is revolting against the restrictions of 
the Victorian society. She is going against the restrictions of the Victorian society, absolutely going against uh, uh, the restrictions altogether. Uh, please remember that, you know, 19th century had very strong, well-defined plots where a lot of action is taking place. And then there were climactic endings. But that is not something that Virginia Woolf is actually doing. Uh, she is completely coming outside this tradition of writing. She is telling us about new ways of looking at art, psychology altogether. Uh, so that is, of course, important. Q Gardens. Q Gardens is an important work, right? Q Gardens is an important work by Virginia Woolf. Kew Gardens is a short story that Virginia Woolf is writing. When is it coming? It's coming in 1919. This is a work which is coming in 1919. Uh, why is it important? Because, you know, there is no plot that we are able to see. There is no plot because there is if there is no plot, there is no conclusive ending. And that is the modern reality. There is no happily ever after. We have to be prepared for that. There is no happily ever after. Rather, the story actually begins. 20th, 19th century will actually show the end as marriage. But 20th century will show things after marriage. What are the relationship problems that are there altogether? Uh, so that is important. Very experimental writer altogether. The Haunted uh, House is also another important work. The Haunted House is another important short story that is coming. Uh, again, you know, these are trying to tell you that it is very difficult for us to untangle from the real and unreal. Right now, you might be here attending the class, preparing for your net exam, but you also have a make-believe world of yours. Is that not reality? Because that is also something that we are creating. So those are important questions that are actually being being asked all together that how it is difficult for us to actually untangle the real from the unreal. The real from the unreal cannot be untangled at all, cannot be untangled at all. That is something. But she's the first person to break the barriers of writing between stories, letters, diaries all together. Her work reads like poetry, according to critics. Her work is reading like poetry altogether. So very, very experimental, using the mundane altogether to, to actually compress and, and help us understand. Please remember, very famous quotation by Virginia Woolf, which is also asked in your entrances, in your exams. She says uh, that she wanted to capture an ordinary mind on an ordinary day. What did she wanted to capture? She wanted to capture an ordinary mind, an ordinary mind, an ordinary mind on an ordinary day on an ordinary day so this is something that she wanted to capture an ordinary mind on an this is day day right this is what she said she said i do not want to be uh, going towards climactic endings well defined plots of the victorian age altogether she's trying to talk about the mundane she's trying to talk about experimental she's trying to talk about the psychological that is something that virginia wolf was really concerned about that is something that virginia wolf actually uh, was really looking forward to Another similar writer that we are having is actually D.H. Lawrence, right? So Virginia Woolf, Kew Gardens, uh, Haunted House, Capturing the Ordinary Mind in the Ordinary Day. That was her reality altogether. D.H. Lawrence is also another important writer, short story writer. Uh, there are these names will only come. The kind of writings will only be asked altogether. So you will have to be uh, well aware about it. So again, a psychologically probing writer who's coming in, very popular for a course we just did a question on the rainbow woman in love about the Brangwyn sisters altogether so sons and lovers 1913 rainbow 1915 women in love 1920 very popularly known for all of these writings altogether right now please remember he is actually trying to tell us stories about how people are motivated people are motivated by unconscious People are motivated by unconscious, by sexuality. That is how we are motivated. He was actually psychologically driven altogether. Uh, but please remember, he is having unresolved plots. He is having these unresolved plots, the plots, and that is modern life. That is modern life. And lives are never ever perfectly well defined altogether. Uh, you know, he was publishing short stories uh, uh, throughout his life also, but only three collections were coming. What were the three collections that came during his lifetime? This question can come in your exam. You can write this down. Prussian officer, Prussian officer, 1914. Prussian officer, 1914, England, my England, 
England, my England, England, my England was coming as well. That was also 1914, right? The woman who rode away, the woman who rode away, the woman who rode away, who rode away, right? The woman who rode away, 1922. So all of these are important uh, works that we are able to see which were getting published during his lifetime altogether. These were three collections of short stories. All right. These were three collections of short stories that D.H. Lawrence was writing that were getting published during his time. But please remember, there is a really important aspect that we have to remember about D.H. Lawrence. Now, what had happened was D.H. Lawrence was telling us about women working. Now, when women had actually started working and they started taking place of men in, 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 in you know, as bus conductors, uh, because men had gone to the world war, men had gone to the world war, so women had started taking a lot of these uh, places altogether. That is when he changed his position. So a lot of feminists have problems with him. That is when he changed his position entirely. And he said that, oh my God, right? He changed his position uh, entirely altogether. And then we are able to see very famous works. Uh, he's writing works like uh, Tickets, Please, Tickets, Please. It's telling you about the changing role. You're talking about emancipation, but till the time your house is not getting, um, you know, uh, to be, like, like A, you're inviting immigrants, but then when your own people start suffering, it's like that uh, sort of a dichotomy that you're able to look at, right? Monkey Nuts, Monkey Nuts is also another important work. Monkey Nuts, Tickets, Please, The Fox. So this, these, these are showing his changing attitude. These are showing his changing attitude altogether. These are written during the end of the war where women had started taking ownership. 1928, women are getting complete suffrage. Complete suffrage. And during the First World War, we are able to see that women had started occupying. Women had started occupying uh, places altogether. They had gone further. Uh, please uh, remember that, you know, um, there is a comment that, you know, women had gone further. This is a comment that he says, women had gone further than they intended. Right? They had gone further than they intended. Uh, they had broken uh, taboos of patriarchy altogether. So that is something that really troubled. That is something that really troubled. Even Hilary Simpson. Hilary Simpson, a critic on D.H. Lawrence, says that there is a dichotomy. He's talking about women, suffrage. But suddenly when women are actually uh, taking on the roles of men, that is something that is not going down well with him. Right? That is something which is not going down well with him. Another important writer is Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway is not just known for his novels and iceberg technique, but his short stories and iceberg technique also. Right? The short stories and iceberg technique also is something that Ernest Hemingway is known for. Uh, so uh, please keep that in mind uh, that, you know, he's a writer who's trying to depict that for all of us. Uh, so, you know, he was trying to say there was a quotation by Ernest Hemingway, get the most out of the least. Get the most. And this is something that all of you should do. First October, get the most now out of the least out of the least so out of the least is get the most out of the least is get the most that is something that you have to remember you know so what are we able to see that he actually uh, wanted to say that just lay bare try to be as bare try to be as simplistic try to be as simplistic a a as possible iceberg technique that is what we are trying to talk about so simplicity minimalism this is uh, this is something that he was doing he was going to paris by the way and this is interesting because, you know, while he was working as a journalist, he was going to Paris in the 1920s and Paris was the epicenter of intellectual activity altogether. Uh, movements like cubism, surrealism were all emerging from Paris altogether. Uh, there is this, uh, there is this uh, you know, work by Malcolm ba uh, Bradbury. You can write this down. This actually comes in your exams also. Malcolm Bradbury has written this work. And what is the work called? The work is called The Atlas of Literature. Literature. The Atlas, the Atlas of Literature. Atlas, we used to play Atlas as kids, right? Uh, now, what is Malcolm Bradbury saying? The Atlas of Literature, he says, if you were a young, unpublished writer with radical ambitions, like Ernest Hemingway, who arrived in December, who arrived in December 1921, Paris was the only place to be. 
right? Uh, it was the center of experiment, creative writing, uh, class of the 20s, uh, the university of modernism. Paris was considered to be the university of modernism, according to Malcolm Bradbury. These all statements will really help you with your PhD entrances also. That according to Malcolm Bradbury in the Atlas of Literature, which was coming in 1996, he says Paris was the university of modernism. If you wanted to be an aspiring writer, unpublished writer, you had to go to Paris. It was a fertile ground for movements like Cubism, Surrealism. These are quotations that will give a lot of weight to your answers, the PhD answers that you're writing. Please remember that. So uh, here, what are we able to see? That, uh, yeah, so the University of Modernism, year after year, writers swarmed in from everywhere in Paris, driven by exile, post-war political upheaval. People after the First World War are lost, lost generation, Ernest Hemingway, right? He's also called the lost generation, disillusion altogether. I'll repeat these lines again. If you were a young, unpublished writer with radical ambitions like Ernest Hemingway, who arrived in December 1921, Paris was the only place to be. It was a center of experiment, the creative writing class of 20s. The University of Modernism, right? The University of Modernism. Year after year, writers swarmed in from everywhere, driven by exile, post-war political upheaval, literary censorship, or just the need for a drink. London had grown depressed after war. London had grown depressed after war. The United States had President Harding, Puritanism and Prohibition. So Paris was the only place to be. It was the university of modernism altogether. And that is where people uh, uh, like Ernest Hemingway were actually going. That is where they were driven towards, right? Uh, so lost generation writers are also going. So Hemingway, farewell to arms, made him very, very popular. Uh, but please remember his short stories. What are his short stories? Get the most out of the least kind of short stories that he was writing in our time. In our time, in our time, 1925, in our time, this is in our time, 1925, right, 1925, men without women, men without women, men without women, men without women, 1927, right, so macho att uh, attitude that he was having, the big game hunting that he was trying to talk about, of course, made feminists really uh, critical all about uh, him. Uh, but please keep that in mind. Do remember that, that, you know, short stories were trying to be very minimalistic altogether. Um, you know, there is this critic. According to a critic, what happened was that Anton Chekhov, and these kind of questions, by the way, come in your exams as well. So you should be mindful about it. Uh, so, you know, uh, Anton Chekhov had said, uh, uh, Anton Chekhov had uh, made this comment, and this was a very famous comment made by Chekhov, right? The Russian short story writer. He had said that writing the story uh, and then deleting the beginning and end. What was he saying? He was saying, you know, you, you should write, writing the story, you should write the story and then what do you sh what you should do you should delete the beginning and end right delete the beginning delete the beginning plus the end this is what is happening in today's mail writings also it's it's absolutely obsolete now that hey what's up how you like uh, hey uh, hope you're doing well hope you had a great weekend etc etc now people have stopped writing all those things they're just like okay hi uh, and they just come to the point HPR Guide to Better Business Writing is also teaching that. So, Shekhov, uh, you know, is is uh, literally preaching that, you know, write the story, then delete the beginning, delete the ending. And what are we able to see? That Ernest Hemingway seems to be an advertisement of this style of writing, according to critics. That Ernest Hemingway was an advertisement. That means he was propagating the style of writing. He was propagating the style of writing altogether, right? fragments that we are able to see all together uh, that are coming in what are the very popular works of Hemingway uh, when we are looking at Hemingway's short stories so of course Hemingway is coming up with uh, works like In Our Time 1925 Men Without Women uh, these are the short story collections that are two important things that I made you write right now but he's also coming up with important stories like uh, hills hills like white elephants Hills like white elephants. Hills like white elephants, 1927, 1927, or the end of something, the end of something, the end of something, 
1925 right uh, so these were all important works that that were coming in he was very banal very simplistic ernest hemingway is being absolutely banal absolutely simplistic um his simplicity is clearly there you know there are two types of critics on uh, ernest hemingway there are two major categories of critics uh, who are talking about ernest hemingway and what are these two categories of critics that we are able to see so there is there is actually one criticism and these are kind of questions that come in your exams by uh, franco connor and what is connor saying what is franco connor saying franco connor the irish writer he is he is the irish writer okay he he says that you know uh, that hemingway simply didn't give the reader enough information all right uh, so he was saying he is not giving the readers enough information only how would the readers be able to figure it out that is what he was saying that he didn't give the readers information at all whereas writers like nadine godmer according to godmer what did godmer say godmer said that you know everyone who has written short stories was influenced by him very very objective very very objective altogether uh, that we are able to look at you know so his short stories are very basic extremely banal he's writing about the ordinary in an ordinary way as virginia wolf was also trying to talk about right or writing about the ordinary in a very very ordinary way in a very very ordinary uh, format altogether so basically today we started by looking at james joyce then we looked at virginia wolf then we looked at dh lawrence and then finally we looked at ernest hemingway we have to complete uh, Catherine Mansfield in modernism and we have to complete William Faulkner's short stories and then we have to go on to postmodern uh, short story writers and then we have to cover 19th century short stories this is something that we'll do in tomorrow's session uh, but do cover these four short story writers read a little more on short stories and come for tomorrow's session now very quickly last class we stopped at black power let's quickly revise what is black power okay let's very very quickly uh, take a tour of what is the black power uh, and then i'll give you the homework for today remember last class there was a rodent that had come or i don't know what kind of a creature had come i'm still like you know very uh, scared what if it comes again i didn't sleep in this this room the entire moment very quickly to continue black power movement or the bam movement the bam is the black arts movement the bam is the black arts movement that we are having basically a movement of solidarity trying to say that you know we have to come together we have to assert our our solidarity all together if you want to literally realign if you want to fight against the western dominant uh, narrative altogether so that is where the black power concept is coming the the concept of black power is coming uh, that we are able to basically look at right uh, we are able to see writers also trying to help your uh, writers trying to give a sort of an institutionalized support to the black power the civil rights are also being addressed over here the civil rights the voting rights altogether uh, black is beautiful celebrate creation of blackness so there is this great deal the great assertion of identity that you are able to see people are asserting their identity there's an assertion black is beautiful altogether the bam movement the black arts movement is very important because it wanted to literally redefine larry neal said that you know it was a very important movement to reawaken rekindle a sense of pride altogether because otherwise blacks were really not taking themselves seriously uh, what was proposed by the bam the proposed aspect was basically they were saying that we need to completely change ourselves from the western canon and create an alternate canon of sorts right we need to re look at uh, the canon that was given by the western writers <coughs> we need to relook at the canon that was given by the western writers altogether so that is what the black arts movement or the bam was actually suggesting uh, it was trying to tell you about having a separate way uh, of uh, a separate way of looking at art altogether that is predominantly what the the black arts movement wanted and please remember black arts was closely associated with multiple writers who were trying to uh, you know so black arts was looking at movements uh, wherein you were able to see that even in 
in songs uh, these movements were largely spearheaded or you know uh, the, these all aspects were something that that was getting emphasized altogether so yes uh, this this was largely a movement that wanted to uh, ensure that afro americans were having this sense of pride altogether uh, that afro americans weren't considering themselves to be inferior that was a major uh, major crux that was a major aspect that these writers really wanted to focus on uh, also please keep that in mind that whenever we are looking at black arts movement or whenever we are looking at it's not just movement which is restricted to writing it's also a movement that is getting immersed into uh, music altogether so that was a major aspect of bam uh, that we have to keep in mind whatever we are talking about it so basically uh, black power was being asserted altogether the phrase black power was popularized altogether during the civil rights protests also in 1966 uh, we're also able to see that malcolm x as well as martin luther king junior they were also trying to support this entire uh, this this entire assertion of black is beautiful so black arts movement wanted to transform the manner in which black people in the usa were defined and the way that they were treated how do they treat it it was an aesthetic spiritual sister of the black power concept the black art was an aesthetic spiritual sister of the black power concept solidarity black power solidarity among the blacks black arts a spiritual sister we wanted to reorder right so this movement was launched in 1965 when leroy jones leroy jones opened the black arts repository theater school in harlem So in 1965, when Leroy Jones, L E R O I, Leroy Jones was opening up the Black Arts Repository Theatre School in Harlem, that is when the movement was started. And Jones's play, The Dutchman, was a really important work altogether for this new movement to be inaugurated. Right, and what are we able to see that that uh, writers like La- Larry Neal are trying to tell you that we need to consolidate Afro American uh, identity altogether? Right, Amiri Baraka, Leroy Jones, they are all talking. Nico, Nikki, uh, Giovanni, Haki, um, Haki also Haki M, Sonia Sanchez, June Jordan, Mary Evans, they are all speaking about. They are all talking about blacks all together. So, uh, Leroy Jones, Amiri Baraka, uh, Nikki Giovanni, Haki M, Sa- uh, Sonia Sanchez, uh, June Jordan. Marie Evans. All of them are talking about the uh, the blacks, their identity altogether. Margaret Walker's Jubilee is important, right? All of these works, or even uh, uh, even when we are looking at I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, very important writings that are coming in by Maya Angelou. So a very landmark movement altogether. Amiri Baraka, Larry Neal, they are coming up with the Black Fire, an anthology of Afro American writing. in 1968 which is also connected with this movement altogether <coughs> okay so larry neal uh, is also helping in consolidating this entire movement all of these writers amiri baraka nikki jivani haki m sonia sanchez june jordan maria evans all of these people maya angelos i know why the cage bird sings they're all contributing to the movement altogether and the landmark work that we are having is black fire the anthology of afro american writing which was edited by amiri baraka and larry neal which is consolidating so consolidation that is what is being discussed over here primarily you want to consolidate that identity you want to create that identity altogether so uh, we'll pause over here and your homework is actually linked to all the classes we started last saturday on dalit writings then we moved on to african literature we have to do bits and parts of both of them so i want you to quickly prepare comprehensive notes work out comprehensive notes on dalit writings african writers uh, i want you to revise the bolton studies dalit feminism i want you to read properly chapters on post colonialism critical race theory all uh, right just cover all of these and of course look at the modern short stories that we have spoken about so that is your homework for today try to cover it up end to end i will catch up with all of you tomorrow at 9 am right tomorrow at 9 am we have a class we'll continue with the short story module first very very quickly and then i think the topic for tomorrow is also short story but i will just quickly check that and uh, also let you know <coughs>
I think tomorrow also. So just keep the momentum going. Don't fizzle out the energy at all. Uh, okay, we're looking at post-colonial writers also tomorrow, but we'll cover short stories and then we'll go on to post-colonial writers. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone. Please complete your homework. And if there are any doubts, please feel free to use the Baijus Exam Prep app doubt platform. Or we'll be more than happy to address your doubts there. Thanks so much everyone for staying along. Uh, big shout outs to everybody. Pooja, Yogesh, Aziz, Aftara, Shalini, Zia, uh, Rizwana. Yes, Rizwana, you can study for short stories uh, for your PGT exams as well. Pooja, Zia, Rupesh. Um, kudos to all of you for staying till the very end, all right, uh, when your friends and companions have left. Okay, thanks everyone. Please revise all these things and if there are any other doubts, if there are any other uh, concerns that you're having, please feel free to, uh, you know, let us know about those as well. Uh, prepare well and I will catch up with all of you tomorrow. Take good care of yourselves. God bless. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Bubbly. I'm glad to hear that, Bachi. I'm really glad to hear that. Okay, I'll catch up with all of you then tomorrow. All right. Uh, take good care of yourselves as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Please cover the homework for sure.